Hey everybody, welcome back to another early morning barking podcast, which is, I'm starting to realize too many words in a title, but we, we stuck with it now. And it's the early morning barking podcast. I, I don't know how else to do that. That's, that's what it is. So, uh, hi to everybody on TikTok. Look out for that. I'm going to start doing these live on TikTok as well. I don't know quite where to look because I like when I do a podcast, I stare off into the middle distance, like almost dramatically and when i do tiktoks i look at the screen right and there we're talking but i don't i don't know how you know we'll we'll see how we go with the live chat and stuff like that we're here talking about bpd and unstable relationships which is one of the markers of bpd and and could easily i think be a marker for all of the personality disorders like is is there anyone that has nice steady stable relationships I feel almost singled out with that. Um, I I don't think people with antisocial be, uh, personality disorder have any more stable relationships than people with BPD. But we get it as a marker. Unstable relationships. And we have to sort of look at what that means and how we deal with it. And it, Because it's clearly a big thing that it needed mentioning right it it needed mentioning specifically uh you know the others will probably deal with it but we needed it writing down so it, it's clearly a big deal for us um and it's i i find it a bit of a weird one because it in itself is not a thing so fear of abandonment is that's it that's fear of abandonment that's that's easy easy you don't have to ask, what is fear of abandonment? You know what fear is, you know what abandonment is, and you can put two and two together, right? But with unstable relationships, that's not the thing, right? The thing is all the other crap that we do. And that just means that people have a tough time with us, really. You know, it, it's not specifically that we can't have stable relationships. It's just that we keep doing stuff that means they aren't. And that's that's a lot more difficult to actually talk about in detail because it's a lot more vague. Uh, that is something that can come out in so many different ways and in so many destructive ways. You know, when you look at our behaviours as people with BPD, with our... Well, basically the other eight damn markers, right? Look at all the stuff we do. We have our fear of abandonment. We have our splitting. We have our black and white thinking. We have our favorite personing people. We we have all that other stuff. It makes us difficult to live with. Doesn't it? I mean, that, let's be fair, it does. I, I know I was no picnic um, before therapy. I definitely have my moments, right? I can I can remember more than a few. And all of those moments added up to make my relationship unstable. And that's that once you make a relationship unstable, it's very difficult to steady it again. That becomes a thing. And it really starts to shake and shake and shake until it falls down. So you have all these these little things that you do, these these little outbursts, these rages, these splittings, the all the you know, the BPD gubbins. And each one just rocks everything just a little bit harder, just makes things a bit more difficult because there's still, you know, I want to sort things out, but there was still that day you did that thing. You know? And what can you do? There was a day when you did that thing. You didn't mean to do that thing. That thing wasn't about the relationship, but you had all this other BPD crap going on. That means you genuinely did do that thing. It's very hard to come back from that. And you can't really start saying, well, I promise never to do the thing again, because of course you promise never to do the thing again. You didn't want to do the thing in the first place, right? The thing was the result of all the stuff. But you ended up doing it anyway, so, you know, it might happen again. 
BPD and unstable relationships. Is this a surprise? Is this something we didn't see coming? Because quite frankly, I, I, I don't know. I almost don't know why they wrote it down. Because of course we have unstable relationships. It, it's like writing has a head as a marker. Like, well, yeah, we all have heads. That is definitely one thing all people with BPD have. You didn't need to write that down. And so saying we have unstable relationships feels, I don't know, feels a little bit mean. Feels, I like I say, we're singled out with it because of course we do. And we snowball when we do it. You know, because you, as a person with BPD, you're very emotionally sensitive, right? You know when you're upsetting somebody. You just don't necessarily know how you're upsetting somebody or how to do anything about that. And so somehow you always manage to find a way to keep upsetting somebody. And then if that person is your favorite person as well, which, you know, they are so commonly for so many of us, then you start to cling on more. You start to panic. You start to do all the things you do when you fear you might lose your favorite person, when you might lose that that treasured, essential relationship. And so you continue rocking this unstable relationship. You continue shaking on it and rattling it and making it fall down. And the roof starts coming off and bits start coming off the walls. And you can see that it will eventually collapse. And then this brings with it like a nervousness, I suppose. Like, should you try again? I, I have so many, I see so many comments on, on TikTok especially of like, I, I'm, I choose to be alone now because that's better for everyone. I, you know, like, I don't, I don't deserve someone near me. I'm just going to hurt them again. I'm going to do all these things, whatever. And it, it really is heartbreaking to read it. It's, it's really upsetting. It's really, I, I hate it and I feel terrible about it because of course we should be with people. Of course we deserve to be loved. And of course we deserve to try again. To to find uh, people we can be with. To have more stable relationships. But we have to do work. Right? You can't just wade into it. Because you might do things to hurt somebody again. Right? There's... <sighs> This is a question of personal growth. This is a question of doing the work to get better, to become a better person, to to not hurt people in future. Right? And I think you have to, you know, if you have a relationship that comes to an end because you're sort of, because of your BPD style behavior, then without doing work, without trying to get better, without trying to get to the bottom of this, then perhaps, you know, that's the worst situation to go into another relationship with, I think. I would never tell anyone like, no, be on your own. You don't, you shouldn't be with it. That's, that's harsh. But you do have to be honest with yourself. There's work here to be done. There's changes that need to be made. There's therapy to be had, there's DBT to do, there's books to read, there's all kinds of stuff you need to do. Because it's about changing who you are as a person. We're all trying to heal and get better and change who we are as a person to become the person that we want to be in life. And we need to be on that journey, otherwise we're stagnating, we're just staying who we are. And if we have a relationship come to an end and we don't aren't on a path of healing, if we aren't on a journey to getting better, then we're just that same person that was in that relationship. And maybe we are just going to go and do all the same things again in a new relationship. Maybe we need to get better. We need to be acknowledging stuff and working on ourselves and really actively pursuing healing. And it, it, we, we have to be making these changes. It's so important to be 
doing that work to be changing who we are as a person because otherwise you're just going to be stuck having unstable relationships you don't have to be it, it, it's it's one that i found i don't know is it easy to get rid of none of these are easy to get rid of but once you start realizing a few core fundamentals once you start becoming more comfortable with yourself as a person which is at the core of everything that i try to tell you that, that, that who you are as a person is is such an important thing that's why it's part one of my my course which which is an ultimate piss take of a thing to say because there's no part two yet but it is part one and once you start i god it's difficult to say it without just saying once you start chilling the fuck out right but that's a thing and I'm, I'm i'm struggling now in the heat of the moment to come up with a better way of putting it and i i don't think i'm doing very well with this i'm gonna try and move on from it and rescue this <sighs> we'll do a video about it we'll do a honestly we'll do it we'll do a youtube or a tiktok about it I'll come back to that. I need to gather thoughts. This is the this is the problem with podcasting and recording it live. But then it keeps us going. Now, of course, I'm I'm talking about this with regards to sort of uh, romantic relationships, right? Your relationship with your partner, with your boyfriend or girlfriend, with your husband or wife, with whatever. But there are so many types of relationships, right? There are so many different things going on. This covers friends, too. This covers family, too. And we have unstable relationships with friends. We imagine all kinds of things with our friends. I have a lot of paranoia surrounding that. There's so much stuff of, you know, they're just tolerating us. They're, they're just putting up with us. They don't really like us. We have all this sort of negative thoughts surrounding friendships. And again, this breeds paranoia. It, it breeds bad feeling and it makes these relationships unstable. And that in itself makes us reluctant to form new ones, right? This is one of the harder parts of BPD that when when we feel things so strongly with regards to things people that we love then when we inevitably part from those things or lose those things in some way it is such a soul destroying thing that it 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 becomes difficult to take and fear of that feeling makes us not love things in the first place you know, if I know how much it's going to hurt when I lose my dog, why would I get a dog? If I know how much it will hurt if someone breaks up with me, why would I start a new relationship? And even if someone doesn't break up with me and I spend the rest of my life with someone, one of us is going to die first. What if I'm just left on my own? The pain of that is unimaginable. So should I just be on my own now? Well, of course not. Absolutely, of course not. That That's ridiculous. We don't have to do that. We have to sort of... Do you know, the, the thing I've kind of accepted is that part of life is pain. Part of life is feeling that pain because it means that we had something. And having something and feeling the pain of losing it is far better than not having it in the first place. Just just massively so. And so this fear of unstable of relationships, of getting hurt, of all of this, this self-fulfilling prophecy that we put ourselves in. We will have unstable relationships, so we do. And so we stick al alone. We stay without people without love without things without adventure and friendship without all those good times that come with it it's ridiculous and so we're the ones losing out on that that's that's just us we're we're losing out we're missing out on the world and our lives and it's a shame so this is one that i hate 
I hate all the markers, but I hate this one especially. I hate the fact that it takes things away, all the good things like this. I, I want those things back. And I, you know, after, for me, I'm I'm a long way into reclaiming those things, you know? That's that's me. I'm a long a long way down this road. I'm I'm post therapy. And it's it's a different life. It's a different world when you can just allow these things into your life. And it's so wonderful and so great and so rewarding. So uh, I think I'll leave it there for today. Unstable relationships and BPD. Or BPD and unstable relationships. They go together like ham and cheese and salt and vinegar crisps. That's the thing. I like that. I'm kind of hungry now. Anyway, thank you for listening. Go and check out the YouTube channel. Go and check out the TikTok channel. You can find links to everything at earlymorningbarking.com. Thank you to everyone there on TikTok who watched me ramble along kind of aimlessly just into a microphone that you can't actually hear as well. You're listening on my phone. This is quite odd to you. I'm kind of just miming, but it's recording. I promise it's the thing. Uh, so you all take care and I will see you later. Bye-bye.